looking at a Russian force of around 200,000 soldiers. That's over 80% of the entire Russian army. And if you look at the map here, to give you some perspective, for the Russian military to have so many of its battalion tactical groups along one border, on, the, on its western border with Ukraine, for so long, that indicated that a military operation of this scale was inevitable. And now we're seeing the first phases here. We have to look at the strategy here, which is to a multi-pronged, multi-directional strategy to isolate Kiev, to envelop Ukraine's military that's in the east from multiple directions, including from the Crimean area, where Crimea has been annexed and invaded and occupied by the Russian forces, and in Belarus, where you, you see tens of thousands of Russian troops, including heavy armor and uh, integrated air defense systems, and, of course, the very important special airborne soldiers and the uh, short-range ballistic missiles, the Iskander missiles, that are also based in Belarus. We're seeing now heavy fighting around Kharkiv, a, a strategic city in Ukraine, very, very uh, a few kilometers away from the, from the Russian border. We're seeing multiple launch rocket systems, wave after wave of artillery strikes from the Russian side to essentially neutralize the ground forces that are, uh, that are, in, the, that are based there. Um, they've been fortified there, and that sets the stage for the eventual ground incursion, for a massive ground assault for those 200,000 troops, including heavy armor, T-70s, T-80s, infantry fighting vehicles, to push through and to punch through the uh, Ukrainian defenses after the wave of artillery and cruise missile strikes. And also, look, we have to look at the Black Sea. This is an area where the Russian Navy has been reinforcing in the past few days. We have a significant amount of uh, Russian missile cruisers that can launch caliber uh, cruise missiles. Uh, and so we're going to look at the Russian military to isolate Ukrainian positions in the strategic areas of the Black Sea. And key ports such as Maripol and Odessa will ultimately be the object a military objective here for the Russian forces as part of the Ministry of Defense of the Russian forces' a stated objective, which is to neutralize the Ukraine's ability to defend itself and to destroy, essentially, the Ukrainian military, and which is, the Russians call it, demilitarizing Ukraine. Now, where does that leave NATO? We're going to look here at the second map. Now, of course, Ukraine is not a member of NATO, but NATO forces in Poland, in Romania, and in the Baltic states are very close to the action, uh, especially when we get Poland. Uh, so we're seeing some reports of airstrikes close to the Ukrainian-Polish border. Mm. The United States has sent thousands of soldiers in the past few days to reinforce existing uh, positions, uh, U.S. and NATO positions in Poland and in Romania. And now we're seeing uh, a couple of thousand more American troops being sent to uh, defend the Baltic states. The Baltic states have said they, in particular, feel very, very vulnerable and they could be... Uh, they, they worry that they could be next uh, following the Russian military operation and incursion in Ukraine. Of course, the Ukrainian officials, the Baltic state officials have called this an invasion, a full spectrum war. And what Western Europe is also really worried about is that Russian military enclave in Kaliningrad. The Russians have hypersonic missiles and uh, medium range ballistic uh, cruise missiles in Kaliningrad that can reach the entirety of Western Europe. And much of those missiles are also capable of holding nuclear warheads.